So WWDC just wrapped a minute ago, and uh, yeah, by the way, it's super weird that it just wrapped and back home, it's like the start or the middle of the day, but here in Rome, it's already nighttime. So it's pretty obvious what I wanna talk about in this video with Apple Vision Pro just coming out. And if I think Apple's trying to make a horde of zombies out of all of us, because I know that's what a lot of the pessimists are gonna say, and I somewhat agree and somewhat disagree. But first, I wanna rapid fire, literally spend like one minute, throw a timer up, on everything else that happened at the event today. 15 inch MacBook Air, cool. Congrats to anyone who likes that computer. The Mac Pro now with M chips. Uh, let's just say I'm extremely happy that I sold mine two weeks ago. And the only way I was going to be sad is if they came out with like a upgrade option for the Intel Pro machines. I feel bad for anyone with an expensive Intel machine because it's gonna be even tougher selling that now. But I am happy that they kept the same design Mac Pro still with all the customization PCI and they didn't like revert back to what some of the rumors were pointing to, which was like another 2013 trash can type thing or just a slightly larger Mac Studio. The live voicemail thing for phone calls, cool. Still not gonna answer any phone calls from numbers I don't know and probably a lot of the numbers that I do know. FaceTime voicemail though, that is incredible. A lot of people have been asking that for a long time, and I'm very happy that feature has finally made its debut. The new name drop bump thing, that's pretty cool. Updates to AirDrop, huge AirDrop is one of the best features for any Apple to Apple device out there. Absolutely loved Craig's non so subtle way of saying, hey, uh, autocorrect will now remember the cuss words you want to use. The new journal app, my Wi-Fi actually went out at the beginning of this, so I didn't see the beginning, but I guess the new journal app, the features that I did see, uh, it looks incredible. As someone who wants to start journaling more and more, uh, I'm really interested in this. I feel bad for third-party developers because I feel like they're always sitting on pins and needles at Apple events. In one hand, you can get like honored and recognized by Apple or your business can be essentially shut down overnight because they just made a first-party version of it. So. Uh, RIP to all the good old journal apps out there. I can tell already this is gonna be like a Peter McKinnon two minute Tuesday and I'm definitely way over my one minute. I love the fact that you no longer have to say, hey Siri, and you can just say hey, Siri, and that it's more conversational. Updates to iPadOS allowing for actual live widgets on the front homepage is huge. I've been asking for that since day one, so excited. And we just saw a very similar level of features and announcements for the rest of iPadOS the new Mac OS, TV OS, watch OS, all their new versions got very healthy uh, kind of productivity updates, but they definitely was not the main part of the show that came with the ever so sought after one more thing. And by the way, if you haven't heard today, I released my very first wallpaper pack of all my favorite photos I've taken here in Italy. So if you're a fan of some of these images on the screen right now, you should uh, check out the link in the description. It helps support me and the channel more than you could ever know. So thanks to everyone who's already picked it up. And that one more thing was absolutely something that we all pretty much knew was coming, at least in the tech community. Apple's very first AR goggles, and these things look absolutely incredible. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of videos by people actually at the event who are gonna run over the specs and talk about the features and stuff. So I actually wanna talk about the psychological ideology behind it and the whole is this kind of the beginning of the end where we're all going to be like ready player one and it's just going to crumble society and our already debatably lack of proper communication and being in person and present with each other so here's the thing the pessimists are going to say that hey you put this thing on your face and you're never gonna leave it to that I will say there will people who do that I mean we've seen all the skits for the cliche of gamers, right? Where you just put it on and you never leave VR because the world that is in your digital world is far better than the kind of sometimes messed up reality that we have out here. And listen, I'm not as ignorant as people may claim that I am thinking that Apple's not trying to do its best to sell you on this new product and trying to get it on your face as much as humanly possible. At the end of the day, these are tech companies. We're in a capitalistic market. They want you to use it. They want you to buy it, of course. But I believe that there are some key differences in Apple's product that is missing from other companies such as Facebook. The Apple specifically called out 
the security features such as when you put it on your face it's going to correctly identify and you mean not anyone can just throw on this headset and immediately access all of the apps and information you've inputted and arguably the most important security feature is the fact that your eye tracking is not tracked or shared with any third-party apps this would have been one of the biggest security issues for a device like this because if every website has access to all of these sensors that are on your face and looking at your eyes then they can actually be able to track what advertisements you are looking at which ones you aren't and over time be able to develop even better advertisements causing you to look at it more and just causing more addiction and habits and anything that advertisers would want you to do and apple has spent probably more time than any other company developing tools and features and securities to try to keep you as healthy as possible i mean the health app the fitness apps the mindfulness and breathing and all these different apps aren't just like gimmicky features to be like hey we care about your body and stuff like they put real money r d and real experts in all of these fields behind these features so while yes they do talk about features where you don't have to get off your couch in order to do things anymore and conveniences that definitely make it a lot easier to be lazy. I'm someone who definitely leans more on the side that it's up to the individual person, the individual consumer to make the smart choices for themselves. I think Apple does a good job at giving you all of the tools, not just the unhealthy addictive ones. And even with something like the Vision Pro, they're <laughs> attempting to make things easier to still connect people, you know, seeing the animation of, uh, you know, when someone comes close to you, they'll kind of come into your vision, so to speak, kind of breaking through that digital wall, having a reverse display that shows the person looking at you, your eyes. Yeah, it's kind of creepy and we're definitely going to go through a phase of people wearing it are going to feel super weird. The people that we look at, it's just going to be a weird sight to see. But I think ultimately Apple is definitely one of those catalyst companies that when they break into a new territory, they've put a lot of thought, they've put a lot of work and a lot of money into it. And so while there's always a chance that this product will flop, I think it has a pretty good chance of adoption. And yes, it's definitely on the pricier side, starting at $3,500, gonna go up, I'm guessing for more storage ability. But just like they said in the keynote, if you think about going out and buying a really nice high-end TV, a really good sound system, all the devices that you need to run all these different applications, multiple monitors, if you have a big productivity setup, all of those things added up can easily cost $3,500. And never mind having to have the space in your house or apartment to set everything up. With a device like this, you will be able to have a much more minimalistic house and apartment setup, but still have all the features and monitors and everything that you want to talk to, just like in Ready Player One. What I would love to know more of is what do you all think about the Vision Pro? What are your thoughts on it? Do you think it's going to be the beginning of the end? Or do you think this is the start of a really cool new uh, product line and could potentially eliminate the need for buying a bunch of other products like a bunch of computers with a bunch of monitors and having even more minimalist setup where your home can feel more like a home and then you just pick up this piece of tech that allows you to have your own little back cave. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys back in the United States.